I know it's a bank holiday, but this literally has been just delivered and let's do a quick unboxing because funny enough, I was just literally sitting online looking for all the bolts that I will need for this little thing. Tikiwa! Oh, what? Where is my Haribo? Yes, we got Haribo. Um, and actually they sent this funny little thing as well with the Haribo. But this is what we're really after. Let's have a look what's inside here, shall we? Oh yeah, sticker pack and everything. My badge, whatever. Yes. So we have the bolts. And we have ah. limited slip differential. Well, see, it, folks, that's how it looks. This is M Factory limited slip diff um, yeah no much to say about it I need the bearings and then I can put the crown wheel on I reckon what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the crown wheel from the diff that I had in a dog box that way I don't actually have to drill the old one out actually I do need to compare them to see if they're actually the same they should could be the same um, yeah this should give us a fighting chance to fight that uh, pesky Michael Taylor. He's a K20 Clio, and the good thing is that it comes with um, with a bolt. So that's, that's a good one. So I guess it's a good time to start on the gearbox. I opened the spare, well, spare, uh, the TT box that we're going to be using. And surprisingly, I don't know, surprisingly or not surprisingly, if it's expected, it's all very clean in there. There's a bit of a sort of like a film of whatever, this will be clean. But even on a, on a, on a magnet, there's hardly any shavings, nothing. So that means that the gearbox did not sustain any sort of like damage. I checked all the gears as visually as I can. Most likely I'm not gonna take them out because I don't need to take them out. I'm just gonna trust it that it's fine. eBay job, isn't it? Um, the main job we need to do obviously is the diff. So the differential is out. And if a lot of people, uh, obviously some people who, well, most people who watch my videos um, probably are into cars, but if you are not really into cars or don't really know what a limited slip differential is, so this is an open diff. So as you can see, the wheels are connected together with uh, basically those little cogs. So when one wheel doesn't move, the other one will still move because of those cogs. What the limited slip differential does, it limits the slip, basically, obviously, between the, the wheels. So it will lock up both wheels. So if one is spinning, then the other one will lock it up and then this one is not going to spin. So effectively, it's like instead of one wheel driven, it's a two wheel driven, if that makes sense. So the next step would be I need to take this crown wheel off. I actually checked on my dog box and I think it's a different one. Uh, the Yeah, the diff different markings. So probably the final ratio is different, whatever. So I can't use that. So I need to take this one off. So for that, I need to drill out all the compression tabs, fittings, or whatever they use, they're not bolts. So we need to drill them out so we can take the crown wheel off the diff. This basically goes in the bin or as a spare or on eBay. And then we put that thing onto the new diff with the uh, new bolts that are supplied. And the diff is done. And then we just slot it back in there, change the bearings on both sides, change the seals.
take off the crown wheel of the stock differential. Drill it out, tap it out, and then... So this is basically the part that we need. This is the, the, the part that spins your wheels. Uh, this directly goes onto your drive shafts and everything. So let's keep that. Let's ditch that. Let's get our diff out and uh, see if we can fit it. This is how you put a crown wheel onto your limited slip differential. The bolts needed to be torqued to 89 foot pounds. I didn't know that, couldn't find the information, but uh, a friend, Josh, thank you very much if you're watching. Yeah, he gave me this info. Apparently, it's the same bolts as they use on um, Honda, Honda gearboxes. So that's all done with a nice bit of uh, Loctite. I resorted to the thread locker 272. Because let's face it, who's going to be taking that thing off? Um, even if it does, even if it needs to be disassembled, you can heat it up and it will lose its potency. Um, the next step is, well, the next step is I need to put the bearings on both sides because obviously we're putting new ones. I would be silly to take off the old bearings from the old dip uh, to put onto this one. Uh, dark side developments are sending me a pair plus the shims and I'm gonna show you how to properly shim it so the tolerance is all good. Not my tutorial, I'm gonna follow what Nigel Pindewagen um, did on his website. Uh, actually, I will link, actually, you know what? Downstairs, somewhere down there in the comment section. Um, not in the comment section. In the description section, I'll leave a link to Nigel's um, forum uh, tutorial page where he lists how to sort of do it because uh, with pictures and very straightforward so I'm going to use that um, so I'll show you that and then once that's all done we'll basically assemble the box and the box is ready and we'll move on to another job tomorrow dark side developments delivered the bearings well, hey so this is the bearing so this is the outer race that goes inside the uh, gearbox casing and this part goes on top of the differential like that obviously they're press fit so the first 10 mil should be nice and easy like this you see and the rest the rest of the way we need to press it i'm going to use my homemade hydraulic press just a bottle jack, a simple frame, and then let's press both of them uh, onto each corner, and then I'll show you how to do the the, the shim adjustment. Because that kit actually comes with all sorts of shims. I did have a look just for the bearings, and just for the bearings, it's like 89 pounds. Dark side development sell this kit with the shims and with the two seals. 120 so I figured difference is 30 pounds and at least I know that I'll have spares for next time I need to do it or whatnot and it was just easier See, my homemade press works absolute wonders. I made it a few years ago because, again, I'm too cheap to buy stuff if you can make it. <sighs> Boom. So, the diff is officially complete, but it's not complete until it's inside the box. So, let's put this inside the box. Tomorrow for sure.
Ta-da! And it's all back together. I did not film how I assembled the gearbox. A, because it, it takes quite a bit of time f fiddling with the gear sets and stuff, but effectively it's just straightforward. You slot four of those in, you put new silicone all the way around, and then you just close it and you torque it. What else I've done with the gearbox? We swapped those from the old one because the mounting that came on this gearbox had a weird sort of like a snap fit ball joint and the one I'm running uh, with those like uh, aluminium sort of circular plates. So we put that one, the new one in. Um, the crank, chef, uh, crank, crank, crank sensor, I tapped and drilled the box as the other one. So that's all good. And this is the front wheel drive conversion. Effectively, what you do, you basically just block off two oil galleries on the gearbox and you just put a longer drive shaft from a normal front wheel drive gearbox that's it easy i will have to put this later on because it, 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 it otherwise it falls on my plate and cg clutches boom delivered me my Clutch plates, basically, this one is what I had before. It's been relined because it was contaminated. And I cheekily asked them to give me something with a bit more oomph, shall we say. Um, I did listen to some friends who recommended and um, you see guys, I do listen, even though sometimes I do differently. Um, so it's a four plate, five plate, um, uh, four plate will give us a bit more torque. But also look at the weight difference. The four plate unsprung 1.04 kilograms. The sprung one is 1.72. So that's almost, well, that's 700 grams weight saving from a rotating mass. You know what? I think we're gonna put this one in and we'll have that one as a spare or even if I, if somebody else needs it in the future, for example, as a spare or I might even sell it. But yeah, for the for the for the price to uh, repair it, obviously it was no brainer. You're not you don't just throw away those clutches. Um, yeah, my slave cylinder is the same one. It was basically brand new when I put it in the other box, so it's done three days. So there was no need to change that. All the seals are brand new. This one and the other one, the seal of the gearbox is new. The bearings for the diff are new. Obviously the diff is new. The bolts on the diff is new um yeah guys the gearbox is ready let's put this thing onto that thing and finally let's put it all back in there and we have a couple of days left before time attack round three and four at brand guys i'll see you on the next one bye